Hey, que la que hay, mi gente. It's Rocky here from SpeakSpanishFaster.com. We are back with another video. Estamos aquí de nuevo. Y hoy, let's talk about how to balance your time and your life with learning Spanish. Um, I think that is one of the... Well, we all know that if you want to become fluent in Spanish, you have to be consistent. If you're not consistent, you're never going to reach the level that you want to reach. And I think consistency is one of the biggest things, more than anything, that prevents people from reaching the level um, that they want to reach. But it's hard to be consistent. And the reason this even came up is because right now we are having a live workshop. Um, it was a, It's a six-week workshop. This week is actually the last week that we are having it. It was called the Become a Spanish Speaker Workshop. Um, it's been going on for six weeks. We had almost 100 people sign up. We had 98 people to sign up to be exact. And pretty much throughout this workshop, I've been like holding people's hands and showing them everything, every single day, what to do to learn Spanish or what they should do to learn Spanish. So pretty much how it worked is I would put together these prompts for them to do each day and, you know, they would put in the work. And then at the end of every week, we would have a call. We would recap. I would go over some new methods that I would be introducing the following week. Um, I would answer their questions, anything they needed. So again, this week, this weekend, we have our last call. But throughout this training, what I've seen is that in the beginning, a lot of people, you know, were engaged. And each week we did the calls, it kind of engagement. It didn't die off completely. We still have people that started and are going to finish, which is amazing. I would say about a quarter of the people that started attended every call and have been engaged the entire time, which if you know anything about online courses, you know that type of engagement rate or completion rate is unheard of. 25% is pretty good. I think the regular completion rate is like two to 5% or something. So Anyway, but but the people, there's still 75% of people that they, they kind of fell off along the way. And, and why did that happen? And some of them have even commented in there and they've apologized for not being as um, engaged or kind of what happened. And it all comes back to the same thing of the, the balancing time and life with learning Spanish. Now, of course, life happens. Life gets in the way. It's not your fault. It's not our fault that life happens. And it's the same for the students in the training. Sometimes life gets in the way. Somebody, some, one person got a new job. One person moved to a new location. One person lost internet for a few days. You see, life happens. Life gets in the way. But there are ways that we can try to, you know, rig the game in our favor to, to try to help us with this situation. So that's what I really want to talk about in today's video. All right, so the first thing you can do to, to really balance this life and time with learning Spanish is to schedule a time and location for your study every single day, all right? This, it's like setting a date with yourself. Okay, every day, every morning at 9 a.m., I'm going to study Spanish at my kitchen table. When you know that every day, it makes it much easier to do. It makes it much easier to show up. A lot of times people think that they have this problem of not having time um, to study Spanish, but in reality, they have the time, they just didn't plan it properly. So by scheduling your time and location and then trying to schedule the rest of your day around that, it makes it much more likely that you are gonna study Spanish. All right, so that's the first step is to set a time, set a location. Every single day, you should try to stick to this. This is going to help you build the habit of studying Spanish, um, of practicing Spanish. Time and location, it's a great way to make it easy to, to really incorporate it into your life. Because again, it's like life getting in the way happens if we aren't as planned. But when things are scheduled, at least we give us a better chance to make sure we get it done. Now, the next tip kind of goes right in line with that is to try to practice Spanish early, knock it out early in the morning. So we know that, well, most of us should know that when we want to get things done, it's best to put those at the top of our to-do list. So if learning Spanish is something that you really want to do, 
that should be at the top of your to-do list, right? And it's best to knock that out first things first. So I recommend studying Spanish as early in the day as possible. Of course, this is going to this is going to have many benefits like you're going to be fully focused, you will be well rested, your brain will be there, it'll be easier to concentrate, it'll be easier for you to get more out of the training. But also what I found and this is from studying my own languages uh, or this is from my own studies in languages is that the longer I put off studying a language because studying language learning requires a certain amount of focus and concentration, the longer I put it off, the much less likely I'm either going to do it or the much less likely I am going to be as focused as I should be to get the results that I want. So by moving Spanish earlier in the day, if possible, you make it not only much more likely that you're going to study, but you also make it much more likely that your study session is going to be much better. Now, of course, if you can't do this, it doesn't mean just give up. Like, tr still stick to that last tip I give you of setting a time and location. Maybe you can't study until after work. Then that's better than nothing. But again, think about this. Imagine you go to work. Imagine you have a family at home. You go to work all day. You come home after working all day. You get changed into your chill clothes. Um, and then you have to cook dinner, hang out with your family. And then you say Spanish for the end of the day. You're probably going to be tired. That Spanish session probably isn't going to be as good as it could be. So instead, what I recommend doing, maybe you go to bed a little earlier, but long story short, you should wake up. May, try to just wake up 30 minutes earlier. And I'm not saying that you have to wake up and immediately study Spanish, but what you do by waking up 30 minutes earlier is you give yourself this extra time that's needed. So maybe you wake up 30 minutes earlier, go through your whole morning routine, but now instead of being done with your morning routine and having to go to work, now you're done with your morning routine and you have 30 minutes of free time. And maybe it's in that time that you study Spanish. Or maybe you just wake up 30 minutes earlier and jump straight into learning Spanish. But by studying it earlier and by maybe getting up 30 minutes earlier to open this little window to give you extra time if you just have no time, which I find that very hard to believe. Most of us have time. We just wasted doing other things. But waking up 30 minutes earlier and implementing Spanish practice into your daily routine, your morning routine, will have great benefit. Now, another way you can have more time for Spanish is to implement it while you are doing other things. Now, this really depends on your level of Spanish because if you're a beginner, you probably can't do this. And I think that's the hardest part of learning Spanish is getting out of that beginner phase because the beginner phase forces you to, you have to be focused every time you are practicing and learning. But if you can stay consistent in the beginning, once you break through kind of that beginning period, it makes it very, very easy to consume more content in Spanish, which is gonna help your speaking ability and help you become fluent much faster. But it's like consuming Spanish in the beginning is hard because we have to be fully focused, we have to be there, we have to be writing and writing down words and all that stuff. But as we get better, it's easier to consume large amounts of Spanish as our, you know, as our level grows. And that's when you can start implementing it into when you do other things. For example, when you walk the dog, when you're driving, you know, when you're commuting to work, when you're washing dishes, you can listen to podcasts. Now, why can't you do this in the beginning? Well, if you're listening to, of course, there are some podcasts out there that teach you Spanish, um, but I'm more so talking about just listening to podcasts that are fun, entertaining, things you are interested in. Because when you get to that level, Spanish doesn't feel like a chore anymore. It's just part of your life. And when you get to that level, it's very easy, again, to consume large amounts of comprehensible input of Spanish that you understand, but the input has to be comprehensible. So for example, let's say TED Talks in Spanish. They have a podcast called TED en Español, and you can listen to all these good TED Talks in Spanish. But if you're a beginner, you can't do that because you don't understand what's being said, and it does you no good to walk around listening to Spanish if you can't understand. That's why in the beginning, you have to have more focused learning, comparing translations, getting translations, um, writing down words, and all that stuff. But as you get better in Spanish, you don't need to do all that, like I was saying. So now you can just wash dishes, you can walk the dog while you're listening to 
podcasts that actually entertain you while consuming large amounts of content and it's just part of your life. So you can do it again, doing things you already are doing. So now instead of, okay, so now instead of commuting to work for 30 minutes and then coming home and then you gotta walk the dog for 20 minutes, instead of just spending those 50 minutes just doing those things, you can now listen to Spanish while you do them. And you can still understand, you're, you still are focused because you're listening, but you don't have to be as focused where you're writing down words and trying to translate this word, that word, because you understand most of the content. So to quickly summarize this tip, again, once you get more advanced in Spanish, you can start to incorporate Spanish into other chores that you do or things that you do. I don't want to call them chores, um, but other things that you do. Now, keep in mind, these have to be things that don't require a lot of thinking. Like, I don't want you listening to Spanish while you're writing a paper or doing a document for work because that requires your focus. But things like washing the dishes, walking the dog, those things don't require a lot of brain energy. Um, so it allows you to still focus on listening while you're doing those things. So that's what I mean when I say incorporate your Spanish into other tasks, other activities. Now, the next thing you can do is lower the amount of time that you spend daily while for, for studying Spanish. I think this prevents a lot of people from staying consistent because a lot of people think that they have to study for hours and hours a day if they wanna become fluent. So this is what they do. They, they study an hour, two hours, one day, and they quickly get burnt out. They do that maybe, let's say, two or three days, maybe a week. Then they're burnt out, and then they're done with Spanish. I'd rather you study for 30 minutes a day. Just give me 30 minutes a day. And this is what I tell everybody in the workshop. Give me 30 minutes a day. And for them, it was for the next six weeks. And I guarantee you will improve your Spanish. If for the next 30 days, the next 90 days, you give me 30 minutes a day of practicing Spanish, just 30 minutes, that's it you will see significant results. And it's just 30 minutes a day. Everybody has 30 minutes of time they can spend. But when we think we have to spend all these hours studying Spanish, it prevents us from ever sitting down to actually study it. Cause like, why am I gonna sit down and partake in something that I know I'm just gonna stop? But for 30 minutes, it's easy. So lower the amount of time that you spend daily but be consistent, show up every single day, and you'll see that those minutes are gonna quickly add up and your Spanish is gonna be drastically improved. Now, the next thing you can do, which is all these things kind of lead up to this, is making Spanish a part of your life. So it should start to become, you know, something, again, if it becomes a habit, part of your morning routine, Spanish becomes a part of your life. But not only that, but when you're watching TV, maybe now you can watch movies more in Spanish or watch TV in Spanish. And if you're listening, if you love to listen to music, listen to music in Spanish. If you love already listening to podcasts, add a Spanish podcast to the list. If you love reading, maybe try reading a Spanish book. Get the audio version too. I've done a video on how to read in Spanish. You can watch that on the channel. But find a book in Spanish. Maybe get the audible version too, the audio version, so you can listen while you read. That way you're practicing, you're, you're consuming information, um, you're listening to proper pronunciation as you're reading through. There are a lot of benefits to that. So make Spanish a part of your life. So that's that way you don't really have to balance life and learning Spanish because Spanish is, you know, part of your life. So uh, those are my tips on how to balance your time, your life with learning Spanish. Um, and I hope this video helps you. I hope it helps you stay consistent, which is the most important key aspect of learning Spanish. Look, there are a lot of great training, Spanish trainings out there, tons of great Spanish teachers, professors, programs. But at the end of the day, you can have the perfect plan. But if you don't stick to it, you're never going to see the results that you want. So you have to build a plan, build a routine that's easy to stick to. And once you do that, you will find that you'll easily be able to make Spanish a part of your life and the rest is history. You'll be fluent 
before you know it. Now, if you found this video helpful and you are looking to take your Spanish to the next level, if you want to, you know, hit the ground running with your Spanish, then I highly recommend you check out our free Three Secrets to Learn Spanish Faster training. I'll put that link in the comments below. Um, it's pinned there. Just go there, click that link. It'll take you to our website, speakspanishfaster.com, where you can access that free training. Um, yeah, and check it out. And I know that it's going to help you. It, it has helped thousands of people all over the world. So I know you're going to enjoy it. If you found the video helpful, do me a big favor. Hit the thumbs up for me. Comment below. Let me know what else you need help with. I get ideas for content all the time from questions that you guys have. So please don't hesitate to ask me any question regarding Spanish that you have in the comments. And I will try my best to do a video on it. Of course, last but not least, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so you never miss another video. Until next time, I'll see you then.